What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. And today guys, we are going to be setting up the Metal Press, which you have all been asking me to set up for quite some time now, probably ever since episode two. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a very good reason everyone's been commenting telling me to set this up, and that is because it is one of the cheaper and more useful multi-block structures that Immersive Engineering offers, especially early game when you're doing a bunch of crafting. Now, every time we do crafting, you will see me go into my inventory and use one of these two tools, whether I'm using the hammer to make a plate or I'm using the wire cutters to make some wires because we need to power some stuff around the base. But pretty much every episode we're using these, we're wasting the durability on them, and it makes crafting take a while. Now, the metal press is going to sort of circumvent having to use those by having a bunch of different molds that can put, uh, be put in, and then those will make things automatically. So the most useful one I would say is going to be the plate mold, but you can also make things like gears, rods, bullet casings, wires, which I would say is probably the second most useful, and then you have packing molds, which can compress things into a block so you can make iron into an iron block, things like that. And then you can also have an unpacking mold to separate them. But all in all, it's essentially a really cheap way that you can use energy instead of having to manually use these tools and waste the durability on them. So, you know, in the long run, it's not a huge thing, but if you're bulk crafting, it's going to save you a fair bit of time and it's going to make your life a lot easier. So, the surprising thing is actually we already have about half the things crafted just from miscellaneous different projects we've worked on because it really doesn't take that much and it's really not that expensive. So if we go into the engineer manual, we can see that it's very small and to make it, we are going to need two steel scaffolding, one redstone engineering block, one piston, two conveyor belts, and one heavy engineering block. And like I said, we already have most of this crafted. So I actually didn't have to go off camera and do any mining or anything like that. Um, because we have a fair bit of resources, but we already have the two conveyor belts. Um, we're going to be using a hopper today just because uh, that's how we're going to be loading stuff in. Uh, we can have some extra conveyor belts to sort of extend the line from one side to the other. Once the multi-block is crafted, you're able to attach conveyor belts to both sides, and it'll just become one seamless thing anyway, so it can look very nice too. And then we have the two steel scaffolding and the one redstone engineering block. So really the only things that we're going to have to make are going to be the piston and the heavy engineering block. So shouldn't be too bad to make. We can just start grabbing a couple things out that we're going to need. Uh, obviously the piston is nice and easy. Um, so we'll make that. And then the heavy engineering block is the only thing that I don't remember the recipe for. I suspect we have to use steel for this. So the funny thing is I have a feeling that we're gonna be making plates for this. Um, okay, and then also with the Electrum, we are going to need to make some silver grit and some gold grit because I don't believe we have any Electrum left right now. So we've got the gold ingot and we have the silver ingot. So we'll be good to make those. That is the one annoying thing, I guess. So we'll toss those in here and they should get taken care of. Uh, so I guess I can use this series to deliver what I believe is some bad news that we might not have known yet. Um, so I had been waiting a while because I had been wanting to continue the Buildcraft series, but unfortunately we were waiting on robots, and I believe we finally got confirmation that robots are not going to be put into um, 1.12. So yeah, slightly unfortunate news, but I just thought I would let you guys know that um, since we were waiting all this. So you know, if you guys were expecting the Buildcraft series to continue. There may be a couple more episodes we can get out, but unfortunately, it does not look like we're going to be messing around with robots, at least not in 1.12. So it may be down the line, but yeah, nothing will happen for the foreseeable future. So we actually need two more pistons, uh, and then we're going to need four steel ingots, just plain, and then we're going to need whatever's left to craft for the rest of this. So these steel mechanical components. So copper, uh, we need two of these, right? Yep, so copper and eight steel plates. So this is a perfect example of where this would come in handy, but unfortunately we do not have it yet. So we are going to be manually making these using the engineer's hammer. And you can see that uh, it uses some of the durability up, unfortunately, um, but we can craft these now, make both of them, and we're making a bunch of new stuff today. Um, but there we go. So we should have everything now to make this. And one thing to keep in mind is the orientation of some of these blocks is actually really important. So we're gonna be setting it up over here, mainly just because 
I don't really know what I want to do with the base yet. You guys keep telling me to make it into a huge factory and I want to do that, but I've been trying to plan it out. I've done some stuff in creative in a separate world and I'm not super happy with how it's come out yet. So I'm waiting on that. Obviously the more machines we get in here, the harder it becomes, but I'm hoping to have something within a couple episodes that I'm happy with so that we can start setting up the base that way. But yeah, it's, it's been taken a little bit. So, so we set this up with the steel scaffolding and the redstone engineering block at the very bottom. So we'll grab those out and I'm thinking we're probably going to want to put the middle right about here. And then we're going to put the conveyors on top. Now, keep in mind, the direction of the conveyor is actually relevant. If I could place them down correctly, that would be awesome. So you're going to want to keep them going in that this is the in and this is the out. And then we're going to place down the heavy engineering blocks and the piston. So I believe the piston needs to be pressing down. Whoops. I guess we actually should put this down and then place the piston below it and we need to get a better angle on that. We could probably rotate it with something. I don't know, maybe the hammer lets us rotate it. Not really sure, but there we go. So now we have to pull out the hammer and click on this. Which block do we click on? Right there. So we click on the piston and there we go. We got the advancement pressing matters and we have made the metal press. So there's a couple more things that we have to do. One thing that I mentioned is that we can extend the conveyor. So what you can do is just attach it on here like you would and we'll have to rotate this one with the hammer but yeah so we can extend it like that now we are going to need a chest so that the stuff can you know fly into it off one end but we can put this down whoops we should be able to put this down over here so that it drops things on there so that if we're making things in bulk quantities we're able to just dump it all in the hopper come out here craft a little bit more and then uh, you know, head back in and we can grab whatever we need. Now, don't tell me I am completely out of wood here. Am I actually completely out of wood? Okay, well, we're going to go chop down a little bit of a tree because I do want a chest for these to go in. And we're also going to make, I believe we can put the different molds in item frames um, and grab them out. We could put them in a chest, but I think item frames look a lot cooler. So we should have everything we need to make that too. So let's look those up. And then we actually need to make the mold itself. So item frames, we're just gonna need, uh, I believe two of them. We could make more if we really wanted to, um, but we'll need a fair bit of sticks. And then I do have a lot of leather over here. Even though I used a bunch of it when I was making the uh, bookcases. So that was a pain. Um, but now we need to make a blueprint. So we made one of these before. We made the crafting components blueprint. We need to make the metal press molds. So right here, the way that we're gonna do that is by using three pieces of paper, three lapis, and then a steel plate. So we're gonna have to make another one of those. Unfortunately, I hate having to use up my steel like this. Um, and now I have an engineering hammer that has durability on it, which I would have preferred to avoid just because it's gonna be like an OCD sort of thing. And we have our paper. We don't have any paper, but we have some sugar cane. So we can work with that. And there we go. Nope. Since I apparently can't do things at eight in the morning. There we go. So we have the engineering blueprint for the metal press molds. And now if we go and look at the molds, we'll see how we actually make these. And I believe we're gonna be using a lot of steel plate. So we are going to need 10 steel plate altogether. So again, it looks like I'm gonna be going back and crafting some steel. That was the nice thing I AFK'd in the world. Um, and I got, about three quarters of a stack of steel and i was like oh that'll be great that'll last us for a while nope it did not so we'll put in the metal press molds blueprint and there we go so we're going to make the plate mold and it pulls them out in a weird way and then we're going to make the wire mold and now both of them have durability on them great <laughs> uh okay so actually i think we're going to get rid of this one and we should be able to put the chest right there we could probably put the hopper right here too, um, but I think it looks better like this since the chest is going to be one off too. So just my own personal preference. And then we are going to take the item frames and where do I want to put these? Um, so, you know, that's the tough question for now. We can just put them like over here and we should be able to toss these in there. 
so that we can grab them out when we need. Whoops, there we go. So the way that we should be able to do this is right click it on there, it gets attached, and then I believe to get it off, we're going to have to pull out our hammer and shift right click with that, and it removes it. So you right click it on, and then you shift right click it off with the hammer. So we'll keep the plate on there, and what we can do now is go out and hook up the power. We should be okay just using the traditional low voltage, uh, and I think we have both relays and connectors out here, and we do have some low voltage wiring out here too, nice. So we actually don't need to do any crafting for that today. Um, so we'll do, hmm, how do we wanna do this? Because it goes all the way up to the ceiling, pretty much, but, all right, so we'll do that there, and then we'll run it out here, and nope, that's not what we wanted to do. We'll connect this over here, and then we'll connect this over here. Okay, so this should have power now. It uses, I believe, 2400 uh, RF total per you know thing it produces, whatever it's pressing, uh, and it uses it at a rate of 20 RF per tick. So if we were to throw some stuff in here right now, so we'll do iron, it'll plop it down, and you can see that it actually goes on there. Now there's a reason that uh, it goes sort of in tick form is because this is not fully automatic. So uh, you can see that there is some delay sort of in it and that's how it ends up using so much RF at a rate of only 20 RF per tick. But it's got a really cool animation and it pops it right out into the chest and boom, there we go. We have seven iron plates. We have not wasted any durability on any of the tools, thankfully. Um, so now you guys can rest easy. You can watch the episodes knowing that you will not have to watch me manually craft certain things. Eventually we'll get to automating as much as we can with crafting. I know that that's the, you know, sort of, some people really like that in the episodes and some people really don't like it and will like harass me in the comments about it, which I find kind of comical, but um, yeah, if we can avoid that altogether by automating it and doing it in a fun way, then I'm all for that. So I appreciate you guys with your slight verbal abuse in the comments getting me to finally do this because I might not have even done it for another couple episodes if you hadn't. So know that I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it wasn't anything super complicated, but traditionally some of the more useful things are not always going to be the most complicated ones. So I would suggest that you make the metal press even earlier than I did if you want to keep your sanity and save yourself a little bit of, you know, iron and sticks and string so that you're not constantly remaking those tools. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you later. Upside down.